little things. It's not necessarily about the big goals and the huge vision you had for yourself. What it really comes down to at the end of the day are the tiny things you did every day for someone else. On our Making a Different episode today, we talked to the First Lady of Sokoto State, Miriam Myro Aminu Tambual, on her Mwat initiative with a keen focus on nomad disease. We also talked to the Executive Director for Health Emergency Initiative in Lagos, an organization which enables the less privileged to get access to free medical care. Tonight on Moments, we just talk to people who are doing amazing things and making a difference. Welcome to Moments. Hey, hey. Hi, Hi ladies. Oh, gosh, I'm really excited about today's episode because I think last year I had like a, I want to say a, a rude awakening, but it was also a good awakening. Um, I realized just how important it is that aside from, you know, us being on TV and mm -hmm. trying to make sure that we inspire people through the content that we create, yeah. but actually mm -hmm. finding a way to directly impact people's yes. lives. And it completely changed my lives, um, life actually working with widows. Yeah. Um, I started working with a group of widows from an organization called the Self-Worth Organization. Mm -hmm. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, what have I been doing all my life? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like a light bulb yeah. moment. Yeah. So it's really cool to see that there's so many other people out there who are doing the same. Yeah, mm, it's definitely. so important, especially, you know, you, you look around and you realize how even with the just a tiny little bit that you have, you're far more privileged than so many people Girl, around. Yeah. And to be able to leave a legacy that you impacted human beings yeah. and you helped them to live their best lives. Oh, I'm, I'm a massive fan of that. And well definitely. done and for well, what you you're too. doing. I know this yes. year. Yes, I'm, well, I, I'm yeah. you know what, I'm very passionate about the girl child. So mm -hmm. this year, um, my number one priority is to just make sure I can send as many young girls to school mm -hmm. as possible from primary school level and other activities that mm -hmm. we will definitely be talking about on a different platform. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it. Well, you both really inspire me and I think, you know, you've kind of broken that thought pattern that you have to be a billionaire to make a difference, a Richard, mm. uh, a Richard Branson or a Bill Gates. I think all of us in our own little way, you know, we can do what we can and that little that we're doing can really greatly have a huge impact on someone's on, on someone's life. So yeah. I completely Both agree of you with are you. my role models right now. Yes, <laughs> high five. <laughs> well, we are definitely trying to make sure that we inspire as many people today. Our first guest is the first lady of Sokoto State, the founder of the Mwat Initiative, which cares for vulnerable people of the society. You get to meet her in a moment. Welcome back to Moments Nigeria. Today we're talking all about making a difference and we are joined by our first guest, Mariam Meru Aminu Waziri Tambual. She's the first lady of Sokoto State, an IT expert who worked in fossil resources, now Seven Energy, and founded the consulting firm called Integrated Services. More recently, she founded the Mariam Mustafa Aminu Waziri Tambual Legacy Initiative after she got married to the Sokoto State Governor Aminu Tambual an initiative which mobilizes the youth, cares for the elderly, the vulnerable, and women from all strata of society. Welcome to Moments Mouse. Wow. So yeah. lovely to have you with us on the show. Thank you very well, much, and it's my pleasure you as well. Really do look <laughs> lovely. So let's talk about you know the initiative that you founded. Have you always been interested in um, philanthropy, or what kind of got you? What kind of got, got you interested in wanting to help? Well, basically, I come from a family of humanists if I may say so. And um, I'd always been involved from my very formative years in activities that touch human lives. And perhaps I'm a very emotional person, so that really drives me into stuff like that. And then along the line, in my career line, I'd always been involved in corporate social responsibilities. So it exposes you to all of this. And then I'd always prayed to God to give me a bigger platform so yeah. I can impact on humanity. When I saw, well, got the opportunity, here we are. And y your initiative has taken up the cause of Noma patients. Um, what are some of the successes that you've enjoyed since taking up this particular cause? Um, the Noma disease itself, you know, it's something I've been very ignorant about. Mm -hmm. We see loads of children and even adults on the street as destitutes, mm -hmm. but we didn't have a name to it. Sometimes you think it's an accident mm -hmm. or it's just some form of deformation. Um, fortunately, when I got into Sokoto, I was going, doing the rounds, hospitals and, you know, to understand the problems of the people. And then I stumbled upon the disease Noma. Mm. And then we had um, surgeons come in. I went into the theater to see the constructive surgery and mm. went through the psychological thing. And it really moved me. Mm. And I felt, you know what, we need to give these people a voice. Mm. They need to leave. Because most of them, I was made to understand 
that they have to pick them from bushes. Some of them run from the house mm. and then they hide in the bush oh. because of stigmatization Stigma, and yeah. all. And then it keeps eating them all. Oh. It starts from like a mouth ulcer and caused by acute malnutrition and poverty, oh. you know. So it really, really touched me and I said, and I pledged and I said, I will do what it takes to give those people a voice and see mm -hmm. how we can save a lot of lives. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's very amazing. And I think, you know, it's great that you're using your platform to really impact people's lives. And I know that you've also signed a agreement with the First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, and she's going to be helping you with treating these Noma patients. So can you tell us about that um, collaboration? Uh, now, the collaboration between my foundation mm -hmm. and Mrs. Buhari's um, Future Assured is one of mutual interest. Mm -hmm. I brought up the issue of Noma to her because um, the Noma Hospital itself was commissioned by the former president, okay. Olusha Gwabasanjo, at, at, at the time. And it's the only hospital in West Africa that caters for Noma disease. Wow. Now, there's a, lot, there's, a, there, there's a lot of Noma cases across the region, mm -hmm. and they can only come to Nigeria. Which is, so I just felt, mm -hmm. as on a state level, we're not buoyant and comfortable enough mm -hmm. to be able to address this, the need. Mm -hmm. How can she come in? And she was willing. Um, she's talking to a couple of hospitals in London, especially for the kids, mm. you know, so they can come in and do the same thing uh, Medicine and Frontiers and all the other volunteer doctors do, but mm. on a larger scale. And on the state level, um, let me use the word, my husband, mm. right on over, Amin Wazir Tambor, has decided, you know, to expand the Noma Hospital as it is. Mm. As I speak to you, ongoing construction is going on. Yeah. And um, they've been very, because it's, it's, it's a federal government hospital, but the mm. state has been very, very supportive. Mm -hmm. Um, on the doctors, the nurses, and the welfare of the patients. So it's exciting. We're looking forward to how much we can help. Mm -hmm. But help is never enough because we have a number of these cases. I was going through the WHO reports, and there was a projection that yearly we would have about 150,000 NOMA cases. Mm -hmm. Now, what pains me is the fact that you see them on the streets. And then I'm from the north. We have the highest case of almagerism. So you see these kids on the streets begging. Mm. You can save their lives and put them in school. True. You know, we've declared a state of emergency in the state. We're giving parents um, incentives mm. to allow their daughters and sons go to school. Mm. So if these get, kids get treated, you know, they have a right to their education and become productive people in society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the challenges that I know that you're facing specifically with you mentioned a little bit about education and trying to make sure that kids are going back to school. But let's talk a little bit about awareness in terms of the kids, of parents knowing how to, you know, make sure that their kids are well nourished. When you are trying to, you know, encourage parents to let their kids go to school, what avenues and strategies do you use? Um, the state government has its own strategy. We, as supportive spouses and mm -hmm. several other non-profit organizations, have different strategies, but let me speak from what. Yeah, of course. What we've done, we've been engaging a lot of schools by doing school rounds and visitations, engaging the children. At the time we came on board, a state like Sokoto had forgotten what it meant to have things like Children's Day. Mm -hmm. So I started it again. Fortunately, it's my birthday, 27th of May. Mm -hmm. So in the last two years, we've done it twice. Mm -hmm. We do school rounds, we take incentives like exercise books, pencils, mm -hmm. school bags, things that their parents can afford. Mm -hmm. Just to complement the effort of government with the cash transfer policy. This, what does this cash transfer do in collaboration with UNICEF? Mm -hmm. They give parents like stipends of 5,000, 10,000, mm -hmm. and that way psychologically we orient the mothers mm -hmm. so that they can allow their children benefit from scholarships, yes. free education, you know. So that's one of our strategy. The other strategy is to do a lot of activities that excite children mm -hmm. so they can look at us as role models and want to be us yeah. so we've organized loads of school debates loads of um, loads of quiz dramas mm -hmm. in both english and hausa in our native language with specific subjects it can be on child abuse domestic abuse mm. rape issues hawking yes. and the dangers of hawking and so far it's been very good you're doing some really amazing and wonderful work Ma. we cannot wait to hear even more about it
Welcome back. This is Moments Nigeria, and tonight is all about looking at those individuals who are making a difference. Now, we are joined by Pascal Achunine. He is a philanthropist involved in various charity programs, including empowerment of widows and feeding of children in slums, and also Kanaya Okonkwo, who is the head for Hospital Visitation Engagement Committee. Very warm welcome to you both. I well, know you're doing pleasure. such Thank incredible you. work. And uh, I'm going to start with you, Pascal. I know you are committing up to 20,000 Naira per patient in sure. emergency cases in hospitals. Tell us a little bit about some of the work you're doing. We are glad to feature on the day you're um, on the topic, taking the topic, making a difference. Yes. <laughs> Typically, what you see in our society today is lamentation, mm -hmm. criticism, mm -hmm. and we can go all and on on that. Mm -hmm but we can step out in a little sphere, in a little space, and make a difference. And we figured, figured out that you don't need a billion, you, need a, you don't need a trillion to start. Mm -hmm. People really need to see that you're credible. Yeah. People really need to see you're genuine and sincere. Mm -hmm. And that was the f foundation, the philosophy behind the Better of Health Emergency Initiative. It's a, an organization that stands in the gap for the poorest segment of the society, mm -hmm. enabling them access basic medical care especially in public hospitals. Mm -hmm. We focus on public hospitals because that's where the indigent, the poor go to. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Mushi General Hospital to Lassut to Lut to all the public hospitals in Lagos, mention HEI, HEI is a household name. We did not do that by forcing ourselves because mm -hmm. typically before you find access into the government space, you must do something unusual. Mm -hmm. But we demonstrated credibility and consistency that cases that would have led to death. Sometimes you see a case of 2,500 keeping someone in the hospital. Mm -hmm. You see someone who had given birth in the month of June by October. The person is still in medical detention. And how much is required? 40,000. Three weeks ago, mm -hmm. in one of general hospitals in Lagos, a parent, both parents were there watching their child, a child of three years, and he was unconscious. So when we, because we verify, we make sure that we don't throw money away mm -hmm. because these funds are contributed by widows, by widows, are true. And some, we have some in our midst who in the last 15 months contribute 2,500 naira to ensure this process is running. Wow. It was until recently that a group like Pricewaterhouse Coopers joined us to come, they, they, they adopted HEI as one of the organizations they'll be supporting. Mm -hmm. um, MRS Oil and Gas also came on board recently. Some groups also went to the web and sought, sought for information about HEI and yeah. saw the incredible things that have been taking place in the last uh, three years. Mm -hmm. And some have from Canada, from the US, they have shown interest to work with us, especially having put in place strong corporate governance that guarantees transparency and accountability. Mm -hmm. But I was citing a case in one of the general hospitals mm -hmm. where a child of three years was unconscious and the parents were there watching. And when we engaged the social workers, uh, what, uh, what are the relatives doing? They said they ran around in the last one week, they couldn't raise money. Mm -hmm. How much was needed? 20,000 Naira. Our team got there on a Monday. By Thursday, that child was discharged. If the, that intervention did not happen, we are certain that child would have died. Mm. In several other hospitals, several cases that you think that hap may not happen in Nigeria, actually as low as 3,000, as low oh, as 5,000. Yeah. So that's what HCI has been doing. But beyond that also, we recognize there is a gap in post-crash situations, mm -hmm. post-crash emergencies. Mm. We that's have road a lot traffic of accidents, road, right? road, uh, I mean road tra traffic, we mm -hmm. focus on road traffic emergencies. Yes. There are a lot of programs and activities towards Prevention, mm -hmm. yeah, and I inevitably. Know, and I'm sorry, so sorry to cut you off, but I know that you, sir, you're also involved in the hospital visitations. You know, Mr. Pascal, Pascal has been talking very passionately about just the experiences. You know, so can you tell us a little bit about the the Non Should Die program? Yes, the Non Should Die initiative was a collaboration with the Federal Road Safety Commission, mm -hmm. and it was aimed to ensure that accident victims attended to, even when they don't have money on their pockets. If someone is out and they had an unfortunate situation of a crash, HEI had a MOU with selected hospitals in Lagos State. People are taken there, they are treated on the time, on the spot. No questions are asked mm -hmm. because HEI has already had an MOU. Mm -hmm. Our primary focus is to save the life of the individual first. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you have money or you don't have money. Yeah. You may be rich, but you don't have money at that point. You may be unconscious. Sure. And the 18th of um, December, there was an accident near uh, Costain, involved about uh, 22 patients. Mm -hmm. 11 of them were taken to FMC, 
And those 11 were treated on behalf of HEI, and they were discharged and we paid their bills. Some of these victims were not Nigerians. Wow. Some were people who were traveling, who they came to Lagos Island to buy, and on their way home, they had an accident. Mm. I just wanted to ask very quickly, because you're running out of time. Yeah. Right, like, in terms of um, education, you, you provide education and scholarships for gifted children. Um, how do you choose who gets access to, to those, uh, to those uh, scholarships? Focus is healthcare. Okay. We, uh, we need to take a, a step at a time mm -hmm. and okay. be very active and um, impactful in those areas First. before getting to education. education. But focus is health. Really quick before we let you go, I um, wanted to find out how can anyone contact you if they would like to support HEI? Okay, we have um, various platforms mm -hmm. uh, we can be reached yeah. on. We can be reached via telephone 234 803 722 8843. The other contacts are the www.hei.org.ng. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Welcome back to Moments Nigeria. Today on the show, we've been talking about making a difference. And in a nutshell, you know, I just feel I've, I've been so inspired on this show today, talking to the guys from HEI about the work they've been doing, going to hospitals and, you know, making sure that people most in need get access to health care yeah. because, you know, it's one moment can be the difference between life and death yeah. and then being there just to sort of encourage and beyond encourage to financially provide to make sure all lives are valued yeah. is just amazing it's made me realize there's more i can do to also contribute True. no amount is really too small yeah mm. you've got such a valid point there because we often feel like we need an excess or a great mm. great amount of mm. savings before we can contribute to somebody else as little as i mean they're talking 1000 2000 naira do you know what he said about how widows contribute 2500 yes, yes. Um, Yes. Uh, Madame from Sokoto, I mean, look at the work she's doing. She mm -hmm. found something that she was passionate about, yeah. and mm -hmm. that's what it takes. We each yeah. have something that will capture our attention, and we yeah. feel like this is my cause. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I completely agree with you, and I think, you know, just really giving kudos to Her Excellency for just being very, very open and honest about, you know, these are the challenges we're facing in our state, and yeah. this is how we're addressing it, yeah. which yeah. is what we all need to do. Charity yeah. begins at home as well. Exactly. She's Definitely. making a difference in Sokoto. She yeah. really is, and her, and her passion is just boundless, even beyond Noma, mm -hmm. you know, she's catering for so many different segments yes. mm -hmm. of her state that really exactly. need her help. So yeah. big kudos to her. Yes. We're all definitely inspired to do more. That's it for this episode of Moments Nigeria. We hope that you've all been inspired to make a difference, you know, however big or small. The details of all the guests who are on the show will be scrolling across the screen. So please do donate or contribute in any way that you're able to. Remember, every little bit does count. Well, that's goodbye from us. But do remember, as always, if, if you, you can, can think, think it, it you, you can, can do, do it. it.